Hey everybody, this is Mike. Today is Sunday, February 21st, year 2021 of the old calendar. Um, we're at the end of year zero for the emerging calendar, or at least tracking system. So it's been a while since I've done one of these, and I, I want to bring you guys up to speed. There are going to be some changes. Um, I'm planning on making some changes in my life, uh, and I want to let you guys know... Um, you know, what what they're going to be. So the first thing is I'm going to be doing a whole lot less of these videos uh, on YouTube, on YouTube. Um, I plan on doing more podcasts um, as a guest. You know, I just like being a guest. And I think that's a really nice way for me to, to um, reach out to a lot of different people. And so if you... Um, if you find this material interesting and you want to stay in touch uh, with that, what I'm going to recommend is um, in order to, to know where I'm going to be, um, probably the best place to go for this is you want to go to my, my website. So this here, if you've never been there, this is my website. It's SusquehannaAlchemy.com. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's kind of fun. This is where you can order all my services. But under free content, if you were to go and click on this link, it brings you to Linktree. And every time I um, have an appearance, this is where you can see it. And you can see it's got like a, you know, quite a history. So um, that's a place where you guys can always um, stay uh, current with the content, which I've been putting out, particularly as it relates to podcasts. Podcasts are always going to be on there. Um, you can also, I, I do some regular stuff as well. Uh, Emily Moyer, um, I do a regular thing with her. If you're not familiar with her, uh, go to her YouTube channel, um, Emily Moyer, and we do something uh, once a month. We record something called the Project Kids, and that's a lot of fun. And then we do some some other stuff, which are for her patrons, um, called playing the glass bead game. Um, and so, if you're interested in that, you can go through her uh, through her accounts if you want to um, play along and follow along the stuff which we talk about. A lot of it is just like you know, she and I, we our, our minds work very similar. We were just like bam, 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 and it's just like all over the place. And so, it's not exact. We try to stay on track, but but you know, we just go wherever wherever the the conversation takes us. And so, um, that's a lot of fun. And um, What's also, this is, this is also very exciting. So this I'm going to continue to do on YouTube is uh, last week I put out um, the first interview or the first conversation which I had with Ross Ben. And he and I are going to continue to hold conversations every two weeks. And those will be, um, and those will be on YouTube, on my YouTube channel and on his YouTube channel. And we've got uh, another conversation scheduled to be recorded on Friday or maybe it's Saturday of this week. So that should be coming up. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, also, like, you know, I, I, I said, like, I'm going to be on podcasts. Uh, I really don't listen to that many podcasts. I know of a handful of them. So uh, if you know of any podcasts which you think it would be um, a good fit, you know, definitely put in the comments, like, you know, um, any recommendations. And then also, uh, if you host a podcast, you know, shoot me an email, michael at susquehannaalchemy.com. Uh, you know, I basically go on anyone's podcast that'll have me, you know, I just like talking. Uh, so, so that's, so that's what's happening. Um, where I am going to continue though, to create videos is, uh, subscribe star. And I've been, I've played with Subscribestar in the past and, you know, I haven't really done that good of a job. And I think a lot of it was because I was, I was, I was split between YouTube and, and, and Subscribestar, but, you know, it's, it's become, um, YouTube has made it easy for me to want to walk away from it. So, uh, for those who want to continue to see weekly videos, um, you can go over and join my Subscribestar account page I don't know what you call it uh, and so we're gonna see that right here so this is the subscribe star um, 
And so what I'm going to do is I've got, I have four different levels. I mean, like right now, look at this right here. I've got, <laughs> I've got 14 people. Uh, I'd love to see that get higher. It was once, it was once higher than that, but I did a shitty job at, at managing it. And I just stopped putting videos and understandably like people went away, but now I'm, I'm, I'm more committed to doing that. And so what I'm going to be doing uh, on the two lower levels, uh, uh, they have access. I'm going to put out like one video a week. Um, and then um, on the higher levels, um, uh, I will be doing um, one forecast video. I mean, I don't really like to call it forecast, but I like to pick cards and I like to talk about what things are going on. So that's going to have a little bit of a different feel. And then for the highest level, that's going. I'm going to have like a, a, a monthly call. Uh, right now, there are only two people who are on that higher level. That's 21 bucks a month. So <laughs> it's going to be a fun call, I guess. You know, those guys, we're going to uh, we're going to be able to uh, um, have a really nice conversation. So I'm looking forward to that, and hopefully that's going to grow um, in the in the coming weeks and months in terms of participants. So uh, definitely take a look at that. Susquehanna Alchemy is where you're going to find that. Um, and a couple of what else am I am I doing? So um, uh, oh, I'm I'm going to be taking down I'm going to be taking down almost all of my YouTube videos. Um, I'm going to put them up on my website going forward, and I'm going to be really framing a lot of the stuff in those videos around the Susquehanna mystery. I'm coming up with an entire. Um, I don't want to use the word course. Course isn't the right word, but, you know, it's kind of like that, I suppose. Um, so the reason I'm telling you that is, like, you know, if there's a video you wanted to see, I'll probably take the videos down the next couple of weeks. Like, you know, that's, I got a lot on my plate. I'm not going to get to that. So if there's any video on there, um, I recommend watching it now. Or if there's anything which you wanted to go back and watch again, you could always get, like, a YouTube downloader and download the videos, either just the audio or the audio and visual. Um, it's my personal opinion. What, what what I try to do, what I think is good, is like when I do a presentation, I give like all of the visuals. So it's a lot of that stuff does not translate so well to purely um, uh, just audio only because you want to see where the information is coming from. I'm not just like you know, making shit up. <laughs> uh, also, so t-shirts. So t-shirts. I'm going to make t-shirts. So I don't know any of you guys um, go to... Uh, um, Follow me on Instagram. I don't really do much on Instagram anymore. I more or less just post um, uh, when I do a, a new video. But uh, last week or so, um, let me go and show you this. Where is this? All right. So a um, couple weeks ago, a friend of mine, listener, uh, who is an animator, he made this, this kind of... Um, uh, retro looking almanac with it says you know Susquehanna alchemy on the top and you know it's got this character who I suppose is inspired by me which he drew on there it looks fantastic I put it on the I put it on the, um on Instagram and and I wasn't I was being a little bit tongue-in-cheek about like I wasn't trying to imply that this was a real thing that was found but but I guess I wasn't like completely like this is drawn out by a friend like I, I I eventually cleared that but by looking at a lot of comments like people thought that this was like a real almanac cover from like I don't know a couple hundred years ago or a hundred years ago but nonetheless 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 what the point I'm trying to make right now is um, I think that's going to translate really well into a t-shirt and so um, uh, James, James, uh, is the guy who made this, and I asked, hold on for a second, where did I lose that? I lost it somewhere. Here it is. All right, so this is, this is the, um, this is going to be the, the image, and I'm going to, um, make a small batch of, like, really nice t-shirts, and this will be on the chest, and so that should be coming soon. I'm looking forward to doing that, and, you know, uh, if you're interested, you know, definitely, um, uh, you know, it's coming, so <laughs> get ready for that. And uh, anything else? I got my list here. Let me see. I want to make sure I touched everything. Um, yeah, so I think that, that that's basically it on the updates. And so... What I am doing right now, I recorded a video for Subscribe Star last week, and following this, you know, me speaking at this moment, I'm going to include uh, maybe the first half of that. So you get, you know, 
one, because I think it's interesting, and two, you know, kind of as a teaser, like, you know, to encourage anyone if they've been, th uh, if they're interested or, or were slightly interested in, in supporting me in Subscribestar, you know, you'd want to go and see the, the end of this video, and I'll probably do more of those as I make the Subscribestar videos, just like, you know, do the first half, um, the first half here on YouTube, and then, you know, if you want to see the second half, you go to Subscribestar. Uh, but this is a good one. So what, what this video is going to be about is um, I begin by talking about debt-based currency, so central banking. And um, I'm assuming if you watch this, if you're watching me, you're probably somewhat familiar with, like, you know, how central banking works or, or just the fact that we have a central bank, Federal Reserve, and, and all of that sort of stuff. And there's been a lot of um, there's been a lot of talk. I've heard a lot of conversations of people discussing, um, like you know, about the magic of money and like you know, sigil magic on money, and, and that's really good stuff. But I'm going to come at it, or I'm going to offer some insight, which is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about what the energetic foundation is of debt-based currency, and then demonstrate uh, or, or show you, like you know, this is how you know a an energetic foundation then shows itself in actual like living reality. Um, and I think that's really, you know, one, it's interesting, but, but the real purpose of it, and this is the part which is not going to be included, is then uh, a look at, you know, the, the next version of our currency and talking a little bit about um, cryptocurrencies and, and blockchain and, you know, meet the new boss it's the same as the old boss you know not everyone's going to like hearing that but you know it's <laughs> that's what that's you know i'm going to circle back that's what that's what the the susquehanna mystery altering reality game is about is uh how not to go from one matrix to another so anyway uh hope everybody's doing well and um leave in the comments any ideas for um for for podcasts if you if, if you're a host reach out to me um uh i've got also a lull in uh, some of my biomancy orders so if you've ever thought about that definitely now is a good time to to order that i love um i love working with people and so i go and i i help you see your story from a new light and you could do that order that from my website those uh susquehanna alchemy and I guess uh, with no further ado, um, here is that, uh, that money video. Hey everybody, it is Mike and today is February the 19th and um, I haven't done a talk for a while, or at least in this format. So this is this is part of my weekly um, subscribe star uh, um, conversation, and um, I'm a little bit late getting out on this. But um, I'm thinking Friday nights are going to turn out to be when I'm going to put these out, as opposed to Wednesdays, which is what I thought I would do, because you know it just doesn't happen on Wednesday. So um, I want to talk a little bit about money. Uh, I heard uh, um, recently, like, you know, some people who are in, in my personal life, uh, the topic of money had been, like, um, had been uh, present. And all sorts of things, like, really about people's relationships with money, you know, healthy relationships with money, unhealthy relationships with money, um, self-worth being tied to, to money, trying to get your self-worth through money, all sorts of different things like that. And, um, you know, money's important. So, so the first thing I want to say is um, money is, is the key control mechanism in the matrix. And so one of the things you need to understand about matrix consciousness, it's 4D consciousness also, is that um, everything that's part of the matrix, and the matrix lives in the, si in the simulation, um, is self-referencing to the to the matrix. So when you are in the matrix and you're using all of your definitions um, from the matrix, it's going to be reaffirming, particularly the primary um, constructs of the matrix. It's like you know this makes it more and more real because everything is referred to it, and you're never stepping back and like oh this is this is not real. Um, 
and money is um you know it's it's a big part of it and i want to talk not about those issues which are you know they're, they're, they're matrix issues. It's matrix consciousness. You know, it's, it's part of to like really break out of it is recognizing all the places where it's still showing itself. Um, it's still showing itself uh, in, you know, your life, like, you know, particularly in our current culture where we've got a lot of um, identity and emotion tied in to, to um, money. Uh, we also have to realize that because the foundation of the matrix, matrix consciousness, is money. Um, it's the ultimate control tool. Um, all of that emotion and all of that, I, all of that um, self-worth is also tied into the matrix. It's tied into matrix value systems and stuff like that. Uh, and that creates a bit of a conundrum. <laughs> but... Um, you know, that's not the point of what this conversation is about right now. I want to talk a little bit about, about money on a foundational level because it's important to understand um, that, like, despite all of the things I was just talking about, like, you know, um, personality-centered um, valid validity, uh, you know, that's what, you know, that, that ego stuff is uh, tied to the matrix and that really, like, uh, really, you know, it, it connects you to it, but it's not just that clean. There's there's a layer. Um, there's a layer. There's a filter which all of our money goes through, an energetic layer. And that taints this already unhealthy relationship of of um, of people with with money. <laughs> and you know, I would say the quote the quote um, that uh, it is no it is no um, indication of good mental health to be well adjusted to a sick society um, holds particular uh, uh, accuracy in terms of describing relationships with money here like I mean um, we live in this 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 system where money is important for for to, to live and you're so you're just going to naturally like have a relationship with it and like as you know we've been conditioned to have these like emotional relationships these value relationships through money um that um you're going to want to understand everything else which is tied into it. And we're going to understand it by looking at its energetic foundation because this deep relationship which you have is very much going to be filtered. Like all of ours, all of ours, we're all related. And like, you know, um, you know, even the good relationships, you know, it's, that's not, you know, you're still, it's, it's a sick thing is what I'm going to prove to, what I'm going to demonstrate to you is where it's sick. And so it's like, no matter what, it's like, it's a loser's game. A loser's game means like you're going to lose no matter what. It's a loser's game. And that's how it was designed, you know. So, so I'm going to go and, and break this down for you right now. So um, our, and I'm not talking about money in terms of like means of exchange or money as a storage of wealth. I'm talking about money, um, our financial system, our financial system. Uh, there's a famous quote which says, you know, uh, I don't care about the laws of a nation. Let me control its money supply and, you know, I'll control everyone. You know, I'm paraphrasing. But, yeah, it's because, you know, it's, it's both in every way, psychologically, emotionally, and then, and then, like, you know, just your way, your own ability to survive in the system, like money is important. And... Um, we begin our foundation, we begin our foundation by understanding the financial, the financial model, which we're on is, you know, the central banking system, the central banking system. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert I pro uh, of it, so I'm going to do my best to like explain it. And I'm going to give like the general sense. So, um, Central banking, you know, everyone is, is, with the exception of like, you know, a handful of, of, of countries, you know, interesting list. Uh, everyone's on a central banking system and, um, you know, that's the Federal Reserve in the United States, the Bank of England and in England and so forth. 
And all of these central banking systems are, are, are built upon what's called debt-based currency. And this is what matters um, to understanding the energetic foundation. I mean, we'll even go further than that. I mean, you're probably familiar with, like, you know, the, the mythology behind the, uh, um, behind the, the founding of the, the, the Federal Reserve, of, like, you know, the meeting at, at Jekyll Island and, like, the voting of it or the passing of it at midnight on on the on Christmas Eve and like how it was snuck in and was snuck in by you know the most powerful financial uh, families in the United States at that time so um, so I mean that's like it's it's at least coming from the story rounded from that that sneakery so it comes in that trickery um, and then it's about debt based currency so what so what does that mean um, the Federal Reserve uh, the Federal Reserve is, um, you know, they're responsible for, for kind of managing the money for the United States. And they don't print it, the United States Treasury does, but, but they kind of manage it. And the, the United States prints it, and then, and then for uh, the Federal Reserve, they're like, okay, we're going to give you this money, and you go and use this as your currency. And um, I'm going to charge you just like a really small, a really, really small um, percentage. I'm going to charge you 1%. Not even 1%. I'll just card you, you know, a couple points. And um, what this means, this is where it begins. So this is the foundation. What it means is it is a mathematical impossibility to ever pay it back. It is a mathematical impossibility to pay back the Federal Reserve. And so it's not necessarily designed, you know, our, our, our financial system is very, very complex. Um, so, so I'm simplifying things and, you know, complex beyond my own, you know, my understanding, but I think I have a decent understanding of it. Um, but on a basic level, uh, the, this, this is where it begins. The, 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 there's never going to be enough money. This is the, the, the energy and the psychology behind, um, behind the creation of initial money in um, in the United States at least or and all federal or all debt based currency central banks um, and so what the, what this means is and it's it's like this is like kind of like a little bit of the magic element like you talk a lot about like you know there's been a lot of talk about how all of the sigil magic which is one like currency um, but then there's also like a, a like a like an energetic magic a little bit more so it's or it's the frequency i mean i guess you could call that magic and so this frequency is that um it can never be paid back there's never going to be enough there is never ever 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 going to be enough and so people who work with it they're not consciously thinking it they're not thinking that but it is imbued in the foundation of how it was created and again this was never meant to be paid back like the system is not meant to be paid back it's meant for like control in other ways and you know this is where the debt comes from um and and how they spread it around amongst other countries to get everyone interdependent um but but we're not even talking about that. We're talking about um, just the energy that it can never, um, there'll never be enough, there'll never be enough. And so there are a couple things. One, um, one it filters through uh, in, in really a strange way psychologically. So I used to be... Uh, uh, I went to school, or my, my undergraduate degree, I, you know, I don't have any sort of advanced degrees. Uh, you know, I, I stopped the indoctrination before then, I suppose. Um, but I have a degree in finance. Like, I know a little bit about numbers, I guess. I never, like, did anything with it. But, like, I, I'm kind of numbers-oriented. I was really, really, really into, into um, finance for a certain part of my life, like personal finance and stuff like that. And so this is a notebook I have uh, where I cut stuff out. And I can see right here when I did this, this is from 2005. You can see that, 2005. And so here's the thing which I want to show you on the top. And so this was a study which was, uh, came out of like some sort of like personal finance magazine. Um, it's from some sort of WAG weekly business letter. And there was a survey put out, and it was. Uh, it says, uh, "Here, how much do you need? Here's what wealthy individuals report they need to be worry-free." 
and then says people with a net worth of $1 million, once they get to $2.4 million, that's when like I'm going to be worry-free. I'm going to be totally free of money. And then they asked uh, you know, people who had a net worth of $5 million. And again, this is 2005 time frame. So like, you know, maybe I don't know how much, what that would be in today's dollars, how much inflation has been. It'll be interesting. But, um, but anyway, so the people who had, fought, who had a net worth of $5 million in 2005, they said, you know what, if I had $10.4 million, if I had, I had, I had $10.4 million, then, you know what, then, then I can, then I can relax. Then I'm going to be like, okay, I got a mate, I got a mate, I got a mate. And then they asked folks who had a net worth of $10 million, and they said that they need $18 million, and that's when they'll be, they'll be, uh, um, satisfied. It'll be interesting to see, like, what big money people say, you know, what happens when you've got like a hundred million, what happens when you've got a billion dollars, what, what's that mindset? But nonetheless, this is like, you know, you don't think about this as working class, but this is working class rich, you know, they got to work. <laughs> and so they saved and they saved their money. These guys all did like the right thing. They all did the right thing by society and you save your money and go and do this. But what you can learn from this, what you learn from this is that you're never going to feel like it's enough. This is how that energy shows itself. This is one example, but it is this level of ingratiating of like never being enough they can never pay enough of the uh, 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 the, the money supply will never be enough so there's there's a couple of, of implications that then come from this so uh, what is a truth this is a truth this is a truth the only thing and when talking about from a um, from an energetic perspective the only only thing that can be in harmony with a with a thing, and I'll say financial systems here is a thing, uh, has to be in harmony with its foundational principles. That's just how things work, and um, so the same is true with with something like this, where like you know how the the financial money system works is like okay well now you got to do and 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 service your your loan you got to pay back some and and uh i'm not certain if they actually pay back or not if it's just like kind of like um like uh uh contracts that don't really need a transaction i don't know enough about about how like you know the actual nuts and bolts worth but at some point like you know there, there's you pay back a part of the loan and um you need to then put more money into it. And so this, this, this cycle of like paying back and putting more money into it, like this creates what's known as the uh, boom bust cycle of, of the economy. Um, and it's like, it's, it's predictable because like, you know, you put in money and it has to be paid out. And like the, I'm describing from the federal reserve layer, but it, you know, the same thing happens like once you get up into commercial banking and so forth. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is anything that is um, what what keeps this financial system going is the constant influx of new money. And so on um, the Federal Reserve level, that's like putting out more money, that's printing more money. Or um, on like a, um, like a commercial bank, like a place where you'd get a loan, like, you know, what they need to do is put out more and more loans. They put out more and more loans and that's, you know, that, that builds up uh, their assets. Um, Anything that kind of works like that. And it's just like, it's a timing game. It's a timing game. It's like, all right, well, this is going to come in and this is going to go. There. There's like, there's nothing to it. It's magic. It's like, it's like, it's in the ethers, but it's real. It's real, right? And so I'm going to tell you, uh, so, so anything that is in that harmony is going to thrive in this, in this environment, in this type of monetary system, in a debt-based currency monetary system. So that is the stock market. That is exactly what the stock market is. The stock market is, 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 um, is it's all about transactions. That's the only thing that really matters in the stock market, and particularly when you, uh, the, 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 the transactions, the buying and the selling. And as long as there's going to be more money put in, like, you know, it continues to rise and rise and rise. Like, you know, that's why we've seen like these, these historic rises uh, recently is just because there's been so much money put into the money supply from um, the Federal Reserve level. And then, you know, it, it like filters in through like uh, investment banks and they usually just, you know, 
put it in the stock market with through hedge funds or something like that, which drives up the stock market. And like, you know, it, it creates an illusion, but it's, you know, this is what's going on. If you know, you know, if I'm assuming you're, if you're watching this video, you're pretty familiar with how all that works. But the reason why that works is because it's like chasing money. It's chasing, it's chasing, it's chasing. Um, and that's what the foundation of the monetary policy is. This is like, you know, the, the, the whole thing of like how Wall Street values companies, like on a basic level of like, you know, growth or earnings per share, meaning like uh, every quarter you got to make more money than, than, than the quarter before. Um, and that is, is impossible. So like it's, it's like that is the pressure. That is the pressure of like always chasing your tail. The people who never have enough money in their retirement accounts, they are feeling that pressure internalized. Like this is that energy. I'm going to give you one more example of something which is um, something which is uh, um, in harmony with the financial system, and that's called the pyramid scheme. Interesting pyramid, right? So how a pyramid scheme works is um, uh, you get a bunch of people. I mean, it's, and they, you know, it's more or less like what they call multi-level marketing um, uh, campaigns work the same way. And in theory, in theory, multi-level marketing like that is. That and, you know, pyramid schemes, <laughs> that is the most effective way for income flow, uh, income flow on, um, in this financial model. And remember, like, like all of this is based upon river magic, like current and currency and banks and river banks. Like this is, this is all part of it. This goes back, this is like Knights Templar sort of stuff, even older than that. But um, like, this is like deep, deep, deep kind of like psychological magic, which then like it, it translates in these very kind of real ways, but there, it comes from a more um, uh, etheric sort of um, foundation. And that's, you know, you know, that's what we're talking about. So um, a Ponzi scheme, a pyramid scheme, uh, as more people come in, so like you start with like, you know, one person. This is illegal. I'm not telling anyone to do this. Let's be clear. This is illegal. So, but this is, this is the reason I'm saying, I'm pointing this out is there's a real, a real, um, you can appreciate the irony uh, uh in the fact that like Wall Street is the exact same thing as a pyramid scheme. I'm going to walk you through it. Um, and that's not only is it legal, but it is like put up into the, um, onto the, uh, uh, the platform as the ideal version of the economy. This is what we all bow down to the, you know, the stock market and then something which is just like, oh no, this is illegal. And like, you know, it's, it's to you ask the typical person, you're like, you know, what do you think about a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme? And they just think fraudulent. They don't know. Maybe now they're thinking about that in Wall Street, or maybe some people do, but they still participate. But nonetheless, so this is how a pyramid scheme works: is like you get a, um, you start in with like a bunch of people, and everyone puts in a sum of money. Let's say everyone puts in a thousand dollars, and then once you get ten people in, once you get like ten people in who put in a thousand dollars, the first one, it all goes in order. It all goes in order. The first guy goes and he gets a payout of ten thousand dollars or nine thousand dollars, whatever it is. Like all the other people's money goes to this guy, and then he's like, I put in a thousand dollars, now I got ten thousand bucks. That's amazing. I got ten times return. Like you know, in a whatever the period of time it. Takes. And so as long as there is a constant stream of people putting money into a, a pyramid scheme um, and it never dries up, like it's like a social contract where everyone's like, we're not in competition. We're just gaming the system. Like this is how you game the system. And there'd be like 30, you know, every neighborhood would have like 30 different pyramid schemes and it's positioned in such a way, it's positioned in such a way that, um, it's positioned in such a way that there's always new people coming in. 
And this is exactly what Wall Street is. Like there's like, you know, you can see that it's limited. It's got a limited shelf life. And you can see how there's going to be like, you know, an inherent, <laughs> you know, you see why there's so many scammers. It's called a Ponzi scheme, a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme. It's because this dude Ponzi, Charles Ponzi, I think his name was, he was like running this and people were really getting paid. And then they finally like caught up to him. And like, he's like taking money off the top. He's like, you know, he misrepresented probably what it was. And so, it was, um, you know, people lost their money as soon as it crashed down. You know, this is this is Bernie Mad Madoff, if you remember. Like, you know, as soon as like the money stops going in, it dries up. It dries up. But as long as the money's going, that's the current. That's why you want this constant current. This is what the financial thing's all about. As long as it's going, it's going to work. Doesn't mean it's ethical. Of course, it's not friggin' ethical. The entire system is built built upon unethical behavior. So it's like, that's it. So, so I share this with you uh, because one, I think it's interesting. I think it's one, it's important to recognize this is how like the matrix works like on a psychological slash magic level in probably ways you never imagine. It's like, you know, it gets in your head. It is impossible to have a healthy relationship. It's not impossible. It's not impossible, but it is very difficult. You have to be amazingly conscious and amazingly like aware. Um, you know, uh, you're you're the fool on the second go around in tarot um, to be able to allow the money to have a healthy relationship. And so, healthy relationship means there's no emotional or psychological. Um, uh, connectivity to um, money and it's it's that's a hard thing to to do so um, I'm just pointing that out um, and so now let's go and 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 let's talk a little bit about um, let's talk a little bit about uh, cryptocurrency um, so one of the things is like, you know, cryptocurrency is being heralded and um, I'm, I'm surprised sometimes by the people who I see embrace it. Like um, I can appreciate the embracing in the fact of recognizing it as, um, as a, um, like a necessity for modern life if you're going to have like you know, one or two feet in matrix living. Um, you know, you need, you need money to survive. And this is like, you know, the next thing. And like, you know, there's, there's a natural um, excitement. At least we've been conditioned to like want that novelty and excitement tied into like, you know, getting into the next big thing or, you know, the next gold rush, the next tulip rush, the next, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the, the latest, um, the latest, uh, psychological wave of excitement which is sold through the monetary system and this is this is this is the next one and it falls along those same psychological um, impulses um, and at least on the surface there 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 appears to be um, you know they're the very democratic you know take the power away from the big banks and stuff like that but um, you know welcome meet the new boss, you know, just like the old boss. Um, same thing, same thing, but it's a different expression. It's done a little bit differently. So, um, uh, let's, let's start this way. So, um, 